Welcome back then guys to this live stream. It is now time for the qualifying session for IFMT GP3. Apologies that we went off briefly there. That was because I was trying to reduce the amount of frames that were being dropped there. But uh, hopefully um, it's not as bad now for this stream. But uh, as you can see, uh, still bright and sunny conditions for this uh, qualifying session. And before we start, just one note of course. Of course, well a couple of notes in fact. Sebastian Boemi back this weekend after his uh, weekend ban uh, for Donington. After what he did... Um, at uh, Catalonia for the multiple incidents he caused and on top of that as well Daniel Apt also has a qualifying ban for for incidents that he caused at Donington a few weeks ago so he will not be taking part in his qualifying session so like with the GP2 qualifying session only 21 cars will be taking part in this session so um, that's that really and uh, as mentioned bright and sunny conditions here uh, here at uh, Spa so uh, hopefully we're in for uh, hopefully what will be a, a very good uh, hopefully we'll be in for a very good uh, qualifying uh, session here for GP2 and um, so as you can see Brighton Center conditions here at Spa and uh, so I think without further ado then let's get into the 35 minute qualifying session for IFMC GP3 so here we are then in the pit lane. Apt obviously going to be watching from the sidelines. And we're going to go to the end of the pit lane with Aero Vineo. So we will wait and get this session underway. Of course, it is a 35-minute session. And uh, we will wait and see um, what goes on in this qualifying session. As we wait for the first set of cars to come out on track. And uh, so that's that really. As um, we wait for some cars to go out onto the track, of course. Sebastian Boemi, of course, back this weekend uh, for the uh, Kenny Star Motorsport team. And in fact, there is a Kenny Star going out on track first, but it's not Boemi. It is Heifeld that is the first man out on track. So he's going to be the first to come out onto the track. It looks like it has clouded a little bit, but as we saw on the weather forecast, we are not expecting rain uh, for this session. So don't be expect any rain because it ain't going to happen. As uh, up the hill goes uh, near Kaifeld, as he'll be uh, starting, he'll be the one uh, starting uh, out of everybody the first flying lap. Also on track, we have Nico Kari in the Suomi racing car, Robert Kibitza out on track, as is Santina Ferrucci, Jack Aitken out on track for Willows Racing, Will Power out there as well, as is Joseph Newgarden, Daniel Kafiat, Carl Kayser, Ferdinand Hasberg, Lucas Degrassi, Eero Vainio, uh, Antonio Fawako coming out of the track, and of course Apt watching from the sidelines because of his qualifying ban, as uh, Heifeld Nardin will go down towards the corner with no name, which is turn 9, as he comes out of that corner using quite a lot of curb on the outside before approaching Puon. So heading down the hill we go towards the uh, the left-hander as he just flicks the car in and uh, using quite a lot of curb on the outside before approaching the uh, the right-hander. And uh, so around the uh, the next few corners on the track, then we go. Heifeld coming out of the uh, the corner now, then using quite a lot of the curb on the outside as he'll now approach the double right-hander now then as we go in towards these section of corners heading down towards um, Blanchimon now then on the track and um, so through and towards Blanchimon we will go Heifeld now then coming around these section of corners as he comes out of that corner up towards the uh, the bus stop chicane and um, so through and towards the bus stop we will go Heifeld then about to start his first flying lap now then along with everybody else that is behind him Heifeld coming down the pit stroke to start He's flying lap as he comes down towards turn one on the track. Uh, so behind, of course, we have Kari and uh, I believe it was... I um, can't remember who exactly it was behind as well. I think that's Robert Kibitzer who's behind him now that I've come to, to come to think of it. As Heifeld now heads down the hill towards the daunting Eau Rouge corner. As he goes through the section of corners and then the sparks come off the back of his Kenny Star Motorsport car. As he now heads down the, uh, the back straight, down the Kemmel straight towards... The uh, chicane on the track, uh, Lacoom, I believe it's called. These se these uh, section of corners he's coming up to, so up towards Lacoom goes Quick Nick as he just goes around these section of corners now. Then using some curb on the outside before flicking it into the right as he comes out of the corner. I would expect these guys to probably be around about in the two minute mark uh, for this qualifying session, so uh, shouldn't be expecting uh, times below two minutes. We should be expecting times in the early two minute zones 
for the GP3 guys. And uh, but maybe we could maybe then again they're only about I think around about five seconds off the GP2 guys. So anything could still be possible. They could possibly just slip in just before the two minute mark. Whereas most of them, whereas some of them will be in the two minute section. As uh, now Heifeld comes around the right hander, but we'll wait and see anyway and see what those uh, laps uh, are capable of here in. In this qualifying session as now Heifeld goes up towards the double right hander in the number 15 Kenny Star Motorsport car. Around the right hander he will go. And uh, let's see what Heifeld is capable of now then as he heads down towards Blanchimon now then. As he's now in sector 3 on the track. Through Blanchimon he will go and then in towards the second part of Blanchimon. Flicking the car in as he will now come up towards the bus stop chicane now then. Let's see what Quick Nick is capable of now then as he flicks the car in through the corners. And uh, Heifeld now then is going to come across the line. And Heifeld now then, let's see what he's able to do. And he does a 159.563, so we will be expecting guys below two minutes then. As Zakari uh, goes into second with that lap. Second then for, for Robert Kibitza. Heifeld's at the top third for Santina Ferrucci. Here comes Jack Aitken across the line. He will go, and he goes fastest, so Aitken goes to the top. Here comes Will Power in the uh, Dacia Eldorado Jr. Power goes fastest. What about uh, teammate Joseph Newgarden? He now goes fastest. So currently a front row lockout for uh, Dacia Eldorado Jr. Kvyat goes to fifth with that lap. Hasberg slots to second. So gets onto the front row with his uh, rival Joseph Newgarden. Tenth for Kyle Kayser. P10 now for Lucas de Grassi. So pushes Kayser outside. Of Only 11th for Aero Vigno on that lap. Here comes Antonio for Waco across the line. Only 12th for the Italian. And there you have it then. So at the moment, it is currently Joseph Newgarden fastest with Ferdinand Hasberg in second place. And then it's Will Power who rounds up the top three at this stage. So that's currently how the qualifying session uh, looks at the moment in this here for IFMC GP3. Uh, so now heading down towards Puan will go Nick Kaifeld as he just goes through the section of corners now on the track. As he will now use quite a bit of curb on the outside before approaching the right and left hander on the track the third weekend this season for IFMC GP3 of the ten uh, weekend, uh, the ten weekends that GP3 has planned, of course, and uh, so still early days for GP3 to see who would be an eventual champion. So far, from the outset, it looks to be possibly a close battle in the championship between New Garden and Hasberg, but we will wait and see on that. Maybe some other guys could get into the mix, such as Will Power, maybe even Robert Kibitzu as well, and uh, who knows where we maybe Boemi can finally make some redemption because essentially. Belgium will probably be uh, where he starts off his season, really. So, Boemi looking to see if he can make some advances, if he can, in the Kenny Summer Sport cars. Heifeld now comes into the pits. as uh, so We have just over 28 minutes of the session remaining. So, we'll have a, a quick look at the top five, just briefly. And uh, we'll have a look and see from Quick Nick as he just goes... In his box there then. So it is New Garden from uh, Hasberg, Power, Aitken and Heifeld. That's what the top five currently stands at the moment. Ferrucci in the box then for AYP Racing. So uh, he is uh, going to be relaying information back to the AYP uh, mechanics. And uh, his teammate currently down in 12th also trying to relay as best he can as he'll be coming back into the pits this time around. Of course, let's not forget, Daniel Apt has a qualifying ban of course. So he'll be starting 22nd, only 21 cars taking part in this qualifying session for Waco now going back into the pits. And uh, he just flicks on the uh, the pit limiter. And uh, so now in pit lane then goes Antonio for Waco. And uh, he puts up the board as uh, New Garden now then in pit lane. And uh, as you can see, Alexander Rossi now then about to come out onto the uh, the track. And uh, uh, so that's that really. Is um, here we go then. So Boemi coming out of pit lane along with Alexander Rossi. So Boemi back in the cockpit this weekend and looking to uh, to make amends after missing the weekend out at Donington and uh, looking for redemption if he can as he comes down the hill towards the Donington Rouge corner. As of course IFMC returns to Europe this weekend after two weekends in uh, North and Central America. Well, North if you want to count Mexico, but uh, well, I, I, I class it as Central America because it's slap bang in the middle between North and South. So, um, But I think it's in the North America a bit of it. I'm not 100% sure somebody can uh, clarify that for me. Uh, so uh, here comes Rossi then, just going around uh, Lacoum as he will now come up towards 
the uh, the right hander and uh, Rossi will be uh, preparing to start his next uh, flying lap in the Willows racing car uh, so he just comes out of turn 9 there then Sebastian Buemi also out there as well we also have Michaela Leishin out on track and we also have Felipe Nazza out there as well for Shadow so for Nazza out there we also have Kyle Kayser, Jensen Button out there as well Marco Andretti, Anthony Davidson, Jack Aitken uh, Nico Kari, Antoine Hubert, Joseph Newgarden's come back out, as has his rival Ferdinand Hasberg, and that will be that. Rossi will be the first to set a lap out of these group of cars, then they're out on track. As he just goes through the right hand of Rossi, looking to hopefully post a competitive time in with his teammate Aitken up in fourth place in the top five. And uh, so Rossi just going through Blanchimon now, then he'll go. And uh, so getting the car flicked in through the corner, as he will now approach the uh, chicane. And uh, Rossi now then about to start his next flying lap using quite a lot of curb on the outside as he will now come through the section of the corners. Down the pit straight he will go. And he will now head down towards turn one as he starts his lap. Buemi also starting one as well as his elation behind them. Through towards turn one we will go. And uh, so coming down the hill now then. Down through uh, the support pit straight heading towards... Um, end towards the daunting Eau Rouge corner and Rossi keeping it as flat as possible if he can maybe with a tiny bit of lift in the middle uh, considering how these cars are set up but he's now coming down the uh, the Kemmel straight and let's see what he's able to produce as he comes up towards Lacombe now then and uh, Rossi just flicking the car in through the right and then into the left hander he will go using quite a lot of curb on the outside and then flicking it in through this corner now then a lot of curve being used on the outside as he'll now head down towards turn 8 on the track. And uh, so let's see what Rossi is able to do and all, along with the other guys that are behind him on track. Through the corner with no name of turn 9 out of that corner using a lot of curb there. Lots of drivers tending to use quite a lot of curb through those, those corners there then. As, uh, Willows, as the Willows racing car now then just goes around P1 as he will now approach the uh, the next few corners on the track and let and he will now come up towards the exit of sector two Rossi so far on a clean lap at the moment at this stage the American uh, looking to see if he can get up close to teammate Jack Aiken if he can through towards the second part then he'll go as he heads down towards uh, Blanchimon now then he'll go as uh, now in towards that left hand that he goes flicking the car in and then into the second part of Blanchimon he will go. And now up towards the bus stop chicane then goes Alexander Rossi. And he'll go then flicking it in through the left and right using a lot of curb. And then out of the final few corners down the pit straight goes Rossi. And let's see what the time is going to be for him. And he goes up to third with that lap. So P3 for Rossi. But when he goes to sixth for that lap, P6 for the Swiss driver. Here comes uh, Felipe Nazzi. In fact, what did Alation do? In fact, was Alation behind him? Well, he was. I don't know if Alation's got a problem there. Somebody overtook him. 14th for Nazza. Here's Alation. And uh, it looks like um, he looks like he might have made a mistake somewhere because he's down in 17th place. Mikel Alation. Uh, not a happy bunny at this stage. It's uh, 16th for Kyle Kayser and 17th for Button. They, they got held up there by uh, Mikel Alation. It looked like Alation must have made a mistake somewhere on his lap because he wasn't that far behind... Um, I forgot his name now. Is it Sam for Marco Andretti? So P7 for him now then. He wasn't that far behind um Oh god, Buemi and uh he, he was in front of Nazar, so he must have made a mistake somewhere on his lap. 14th for Anthony Davidson, so that's that for him. Here comes Jack Aiken who heads down the pit straight and Aiken uh doesn't improve his stays for the moment. Rossi's still out qualifying him at the moment. Kari uh goes up into tenth place there, so into the top ten goes Kari. As uh, so 13th for Antoine Hubert. Here comes Joseph Newgarden now, then the championship leader. And uh, he doesn't improve, stays where he uh, stays on the time he's currently on. An improvement for Hasberg, but he stays in second place, unable to defrain Newgarden off the top at the moment. And uh, so that's that really. And they are the guys that have done laps. So at the moment, it is still Newgarden fastest with Hasberg in second and Rossi rounding out the top three. So that's how it currently looks at the moment in the top three. Uh, so there is Buemi just coming around that right hand. He'll be going back into the pits this lap. 
And they're relaying some data back to team boss Victor Bobo. As now through Blanchimon, he will go. And uh, Sebastian Boemi through he will go in towards that left hander. And he'll then go straight on into pit lane. So into the pit goes Sebastian Boemi. As uh, he will uh, pull into his box, as will Rossi, who's currently up in third place. Let's quickly look then at what the top five curtails then. And the top five is currently Newgarden, Hasberg, Rossi, Power and Aitken. So that's how it currently looks at this stage. And uh, as you can see, Apt currently down the back. Uh, Alation 21st. Apt, of course, with a qualifying ban. We believe Alation made a mistake on his lap. And as a result, held up teammate Kayser and, of course, Britt Jensen Button. As uh, those guys coming back into pit lane. It uh, looks like Button passed Kayser on track before coming into pit lane there then. As uh, we have just over 20 minutes of the session remaining. Well, just under 21 minutes, I should say. Hasberg coming back into pit lane this lap in the Auto Jamaica car. As uh, he has recently been confirmed as uh, a test driver for Eldorado next season. So, Ferdinand Hasberg getting a job in the top class. Whether that will mean we'll be possibly seeing him in the Young Drivers Test um, uh, after the British Grand Prix. Uh, after next week's race, of course, we will wait and see. But uh, I wonder if that will probably be in Eldorado's plans, perhaps. And uh, pretty much that young driver's test, uh, the teams can bring any driver they want as long as um, one, they haven't been taken by another, another team, of which if they have, they have to negotiate a possibility of them. They have to negotiate with the team if it's possible for them to allow them to drive to their car that weekend. Um, and on top of that as well, uh, just on top of that, um, on top of that as well, the drivers themselves have to be between the ages of 16 to 30. So uh, that's kind of that for the young drivers. So I'll, I'll ask for the teams, uh, their young drivers next week. So don't ask me now, guys. Don't tell me them now, guys. I'll ask you next week when uh, we get closer to the time. Uh, but uh, I wonder if that's going to be in Eldorado's plans, perhaps. But we'll wait and see. As uh, Nico Kari, I believe this is. Sorry, no, it's not. It's Eero Vinio has just come out onto the track for Suomi Racing. As Vinio now then just goes through Puan now then in the Soemi racing car. As he will now come up towards the right and left hander on the track. Flicking the car in through the corner and then in towards the left hander. He will go using quite a lot of curb on the outside as he will now approach the left hander. And uh, Kari preparing then to start uh, his next flying lap as he just comes out of the corner. So that's that for him. Robert Kibitza out on track as well for KR Racing. So Kibitza out there. Lucas Degrassi also coming out onto the track, as is Will Power out there as well. Nick Kaifeld out there, as is Daniel Kafiat, Santina Ferrucci, Jensen Button, uh, Alexander Rossi out there as well, as is Anthony Davidson, uh, Antonio Fawako, uh, Sebastian Buemi, Marco Andretti. Uh, those guys are ready to come out. As uh, Vinio now then heads down the pit straight to start his next flying lap as he comes down towards the source. So in towards turn one then goes the young Finn, flicking the car in, uh, using as much outside as possible as he heads down the hill towards the support pit straight. As he will then go up towards the daunting uh, Eau Rouge corner as we have just over 18 minutes of this qualifying session remaining. We're 11 minutes away from the half past six mark, so we are 41 minutes away from the press conference for the top class. As uh, Vinio now then heads down towards Lacombe and um, Vinio Coming down towards these next section of corners. In towards these. In towards Lacombe, he will go. Using a lot of the curb on the outside there, then, for the perfect exit. Into the entrance towards the last part of Lacombe. As he will now come up towards turn 8. And then the corner with no name, which is turn 9. And uh, so around the corner, then, goes Viney out through turn 9. And so far, a tidy lap for the young Finn. Using a lot of the curb there on the left and right hand side there. As he heads down towards Puan now then. And making sure he doesn't understeer the car into the gravel into that corner. Luckily he doesn't. And uh, that's smooth at the moment for Vinio. As he will now come up towards the right and left hander on the track. And uh, so out of the corner now then heading towards the double right hander on the track. We will go Vinio. Um... Through towards the uh, out of the corner now, then before approaching Blanchimon. And let's see what Vinio is able to do now, then, as he just goes through the section of corners. 
up towards the left hand he will go and let's see what the time is going to be be for Aero as he comes up towards the bus stop chicane let's see what Vineo is able to manage then can he get out of the two minute mark and get under two minutes here comes Vineo now then down the pit straight and across the line goes the young Finn and he doesn't improve he stays 16th for the moment Robert Kibitza down in 11th but it is going to be an improvement for the pole and it is but only up into 10th place only just able to get into the top 10 goes uh, Robert Kibitza here comes Lucas Degrassi in the American engineering car what can Degrassi do as he crosses the line and improves but stays 14th for that lap will power in the Dacia Eldorado Jr power crosses the line and doesn't improve, stays in fourth place for the moment. Still eighth for Quick Nick, Nick Heifelt. Here comes Daniel Kafiat in the Penzo or Grand Prix car. And let's see what he's able to do then as he flicks the car in for the bus stop. A lot of curb being used on the outside in towards the final few corners and onto the pit straight goes Daniel Kafiat. And let's see what the Russian is able to do. He goes up to fifth for that lap, so up to P5 goes Daniel Kafiat as it's still 12th for Santina Ferrucci, no improvement for the young American. Jensen Button now with a clear track in front, surely that's got to be an improvement, that's for sure, but where is Button going to go? Only 17th for that lap, so Button appears to be struggling around this track compared to teammate Daniel Kafiat, as uh, Rossi's on a lap, looking to see if he can get his Willows Racing car onto the front row, as he comes up towards the bus stop chicane now then, and let's see what Rossi is able to do now then, through the bus stop goes the American, a lot of curb on the outside, down the pit straight now, then goes Rossi, where is he going to place himself, Rossi crosses the line, and doesn't improve, he stays third with that lap there then, Anthony Davidson heading down the pit straight, and he doesn't improve either, he stays 15th for the moment, as um, 19th still for Antonio Fawaco, Buemi improves, but stays in 6th place, no improvement on position though for the Swiss, as here comes Marco Andretti in towards the bus stop, currently up in 8th place at the moment. Let's see if Andretti is able to get up close to teammate Ferdinand Hasberg. Down the pitch straight and Andretti crosses the line and he stays in 8th place. No improvement for Andretti. As uh, cars now then go back into pit lane. So at the moment it is still New Garden at the top with Hasberg in 2nd place. And then Rossi still running at the top 3. Not much happening in the top 3 at the moment as uh, 14 and a half minutes remain in this qualifying seven session seven minutes away now then from the half past six mark as button just goes through the right and left hander using quite a lot of curb on the outside before approaching the double right hander now then we'll be seeing button peel into the pit lane as he just flicks the car in through that corner and uh, so now into the corner then he'll go as he will now go into pit lane this lap through the left hander he will go as mentioned, Button is coming into the pits this lap because he obviously um, uh, completed his lap. But he's only up in 17th at the moment, so appearing to struggle in this qualifying session. As we wait for another set of cars to come out, one of them being Jack Aitken. And I should say Buemi actually got up into 6th place, I should say, not to remaining in 6th. I do apologise for that. He got in front of Aitken because Aitken was in front of Buemi uh, a little bit earlier on. But we've got a car out on track now then in the form of Felipe Nazu. And uh, so Naza now then out on track as he goes down towards the support pit straight. And he'll go up towards the daunting Blanchimon now then. Sorry, Arouge, daunting Arouge corner. And uh, so now he'll head down towards the Kemmel straight where a lot of the fans will be hanging around in deck chairs or sitting on the ground. And, uh, well, uh, unless the, uh, the, 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 the area that they are, the grass has dried out a bit because it was damp a little earlier on. Then uh, I don't know if, if they'll just be standing or maybe sitting on the ground if they're going to risk it. Maybe put a mat underneath them or even just sit on deck chairs. Who knows? Because I don't think there is actually a grandstand down there, which is quite odd. I think that could do with an actual grandstand. But then again, that would mean paying more, wouldn't it? Um, but uh, it's fine as it is at the moment. As uh, NASA goes down the hill as he'll be starting his uh, next flying lap quite soon. Antoine Hubert in the KR Racing car is out on track. We also have Jack Aitken out there. Mikhail Alation out on track as well as is Ferdinand Hasberg. Carl Kayser coming out. We'll be expecting Lucas Degrassi um, Aero Vigno, uh Nico Kari and Joseph Newgrand and Will Power and Robert Kibitza to also be joining these guys on track as NASA goes up towards the right hand as he, as he prepares to start his next flying lap, the young Brazilian just comes around the right-hander now then on the track. With just over 12 minutes of the session remaining. The session going quite quickly, it must be said. 
the minutes being shaved off all the time, it must be said, as uh, Naza will go up towards the uh, the bus stop chicane. So through the, the left hand, he will go and up towards the bus stop will go Felipe Naza. So flicking the car in through the corner now then. A lot of curb being used on the outside as he goes through the final few corners heading down the pit straight. And Naza crosses the line to start his next flying lap as he goes down towards the source now then. And now through the source. He will go at, of course, looking on from the pit lane because of his qualifying ban. So he's not taking part in this session. We have to let's not forget. Heading down the um, down the support pit straight up towards Eau Rouge, and uh, so far a tidy lap for Naza at this stage as he comes out of the corner before approaching the Camel Straight and uh, approaching the end of sector one quite soon. Naza currently finding himself down in 18th, so Naza appearing to struggle in this qualifying session, looking to see if this lap will be the one to improve on, as he just goes through the right, left, and then into the right hand that he will go, and uh, so into the, out of the corner he will go, heading down towards the uh, the right hander, so down the hill he goes, as he tucks the car in through that corner, in towards the corner with no name of turn 9, and uh, of course I think there's only been one major mistake in this qualifying session coming from Mikhail Alation, uh, as a result of that mistake he made earlier on. Uh, which resulted in him having quite a slow lap and holding up the likes of Kayser and Button. Uh, sadly, it was unseen by the cameras, so uh, no point in trying to rewind to see what on earth happened. As uh, now food towards the right and left hand, there goes Naza. As he uses a lot of the curb on the outside up towards the double right hand, he will go. As uh, a lot of curb is being used on the outside, uh, feeding it through the right hander. Out of the corner, heading down towards... In down towards Blanchimont now then on the track and uh, so now in towards the corner now then flicking the car in and now in towards the second part of Blanchimont as he prepares to finish off his current flying lap up towards the bus stop chicane will go Naza flicking the car in for the left and right hander a lot of curb being used on the outside out of the corner he goes down the pit straight and across the line Goes Felipe Naza, what's the time going to be? And he goes up to 11, so a big improvement for Naza, but still not in the top 10 at this stage. In fact, Car has actually uh, got a little bit of a problem, it seems, because he seems to have a uh, a little bit of a Pedro de la Rosa glitch happening in the pit lane, it must be said, from last season, because Car just doesn't seem to be able to move. So uh, a very odd glitch in the pit lane there, then. I wonder if somebody will try and budge him uh, in pit lane, help him get a move on, as uh, Hubert finishes his lap 14th for him, 7th for Aitken. Uh, so Degrassi looks like he's going to get held up as he starts his next flying lap. Mikhail uh, through towards Blanchimont he will go. As he will now approach the uh, the bus stop chicane on the track. And let's see what Alation is able to do. Flicking the car in through the corner. Uh, so he now goes through the section of corners now then. Alation out of the corner. Down the pit straight. And he goes up into 13th place. So only 13th. For the Russian, Ferdinand Hasper, can he try and dethrone Newgarden off the top, across the line, and no he can't, he stays in second place with the lap, Kyle Kayser, in towards the chicane he will go, and let's see what Kyle Kayser is able to do on this lap now then, Kayser now then is going to cross the line, and he improves but stays in 21st, effectively last because of Apps qualifying ban, Newgarden can he improve on his pole position time? And no, he can't. So he's on 1 minute 58.596. So far, he appears to be dominating this qualifying session. Robert Kubitz across the line and goes up into 7th place for an improvement for the Polish driver. Here comes Will Power across the line. He goes up to 3rd, so he gets his car into the top 3. Pushes Rossi down to 4th place. Aero Vineo stays in 18th place. No improvement for him. As here comes Quick Knit. Nick Kaifel just in the cusp of the top 10 at the moment. Into the bus stop goes the German. A lot of curb being used on the outside through the final few corners then goes Nick Heifeld as he will now cross the line and he goes up to fifth so a big improvement there from Heifeld to get up into the top five there then and uh, let's see if uh, Nasa can help out uh, help out Kari a little bit it doesn't look like he will and uh, which is a bit of a shame but uh, there you have it uh, I don't know if uh, Kari will be stuck there for the rest of the session he'll be hoping that his 12th place will be decent enough as Degrassi on a lap, I don't know, of course, if he got held up a little earlier on. Let's see if it has affected his time as he comes down the pitch straight to Grassi. Currently 16th and doesn't improve. Stay 16th, so it looks like the held up might have cost him uh, a, a little bit there.
but uh, that's that ready car he's still stuck it appears and uh, looking to see if anybody can try and move him if he can because it appears that that Pedro de la Rosa glitch has happened to him there then and uh, that's that really it's a Kvyat in pit lane there then Mikel Alicia into the pits he goes and um, Kari hoping that somebody pushes him tries to give him a helping hand as uh, into the pit lane goes Hasberg and uh, Kvyat going out onto the track here comes Kyle Kayser and new gun coming in as is Kibitz a few cars going into pit lane I want to see if somebody gets pushed out some cars are going out onto the track is it his mechanics maybe no maybe uh, new gardens no what about uh, Kubica then and uh, let's see whose mechanics are, are close by to where apt is that's what I want to know is it uh, powers uh, no it's not anybody else behind him it might be Vinio is in fact Kyle's own teammate it's not in fact it's not his um, so whose mechanics are they then it might be Heifeld maybe we'll have a look who comes into pit lane or maybe even Degrassi's actually it could be even Degrassi's um, I know there are some cars out on track we'll try and get to them in a little bit so uh, Heifeld going in let's see if uh, Lucas Degrassi can help out Kari a little bit going out of his box uh, so Degrassi now then coming around Blanchimon now then of course Kvyat's out on track about to set a, a lap quite soon as we have just over five minutes in the session remaining. Kari hoping that somebody helps him out so that uh, he can get possibly either one or two more flying laps in as uh, Degrassi now then goes into the pits. Let's see if this helps out Kari in any way. As, uh, as uh, No, it wasn't in fact Degrassi. So whose mechanics are in front of um, apps then? That's quite a weird one. Why are there mechanics out there? Um... So uh, it looks like he's going to be stuck there then for a while. And uh, oh, in fact, they are um, Daniel Lapp's mechanics uh, there. That was who I was looking at. I do apologize. Anyway, looks like Kari's session might be done with. But uh, anyway, in terms of the others, they're about to start laps. Then we go to Danny Kafiat now. Then he comes around the bus stop chicane as he quite, uses quite a lot of curb as he's about to start his next flying lap, heading down the, uh, the pit straight now, then towards the first corner. And uh, so he starts his lap as we have just under five minutes of the session remaining. Coming out of that corner now then, heading down the hill. Uh, so Nasa goes out on the track. Up towards Eau Rouge will go Daniel Kafia. And uh, up towards Eau Rouge goes the Russian. Looking to see if he can improve on what is at the moment P6 at the moment. See if he can get his Penzel Grand Prix car back into the top five as he heads down the, uh, the Kemmel straight towards the right, left and right hand of Lacombe. Naza, of course, coming out onto the track, in towards the right hand, and then goes Kvyat, flicking the car in through the corners now then, using a lot of curb on the outside, flicking it in through the right hander, as a lot of curb being used on the outside, heading down the hill towards the right hander now, then we go. And uh, so now, coming out of the corner, through the left hander now, then we go. And uh, so now... Up towards uh, Puan, then we go. Kvyat looking to do another flying lap. Uh, the, looking to improve on his flying lap, I should say. That made no sense whatsoever, as I was saying. As he come through the section of corners, and then Kvyat out of the corner. He will go using a lot of curb on the outside. We're approaching towards the end of the session now anyway. And according to Kvyat's theory, there, he's improving on his best time by 34 thousandths of a second. Just over three minutes of the session remaining. Kvyat coming out. Of that right hander down towards Blanchimon, he will go. It's a flat corner now, then he's flat two uh, corners of Blanchimon. Through the left hander, he goes up towards the second part of Blanchimon, he will go. Flicking the car in as he will now approach the bus stop chicane. Into the corner, then he'll go. Flicking the car in for the left and right hander. A lot of curb being used on the outside. Out of the final few corners and onto the pit straight goes Daniel Kafiat, and across the line, he will go. And he improves but stays in 6th place. That's his lap there then. As Kari starts the lap, here comes Santina Ferrucci in the AYP racing car. And uh, he stays 14th with that lap. Does uh, Ferrucci no improvement? Alation about to start lap as he's Aitken. As we now look at Fawako. 
flicking the car in through these corners for Waco so far struggling this season it must be said in that car and I uh, wouldn't be surprised if Will Nell is probably having a few words with the young Italian at this stage for Waco coming out the corner as he'll go flat through the right hander flicking the car in as uh, he heads down towards Blanchimon now down on the track and uh, let's see what Fawako is able to do as he goes through Blanchimon up towards the second part he will go getting the car tucked in there and he will now come up towards the bus stop chicane let's see what Fawako is able to do then around the chicane he'll go a lot of curb being used on the outside around the final few corners and onto the pit straight goes Antonio Fawako and Fawako crosses the line and he doesn't improve stays in 20th with that lap there then Rossi doesn't improve stays in fourth with that lap behind him uh, Buemi stays in seventh place no improvement for the Swiss driver still 10th for Andretti and uh, so that's that for him here comes Antoine Hubert just over one minute to go Hubert now then coming across the line this is going to be an improvement for the Frenchman it isn't he stays 15th with that lap there then as we now look at Jensen Button across the line goes the Brit and he goes up into 13th place so that's that for the British veteran only 13th for Jensen Button here comes Anthony Davidson his fellow compatriot crosses the line and he stays in 18th place no improvement for him as uh, so Kvyat's going back into the pits we now look at Felipe Naza in the shadow racing cars he comes up towards the bus stop chicane about to finish off his final flying lap 45 seconds remaining on the clock Naza now then through the final few corners and onto the pit straight will go the young Brazilian and Naza improves no he doesn't he stays in P11 with that lap and uh, that's that for Naza uh, so we now look at Mikhail Alation down in 14th place for the moment he will now come up towards the bus stop chicane and let's see what Alation is able to do then round the left and right and he will go a lot of curb being used on the outside around the final few corners then we go and Alation now then is going to cross the line and he goes up to 12 so an improvement for the Russian but still not in the top 10 Aitken stays ninth not the best of qualifying sessions this season for the British Korean and uh, I think that will be that then really because nobody else is waiting in pit lane other than Nico Kari he's still trying to get himself on track but the checkered flag is out and that is the end of the session there then so Kari can't even do a lap either way so as a result it appears that Joseph Newgarden has taken pole position for race one tomorrow and uh, so two bonus points going towards the championship leader there on that uh, that time around as uh, Aiken just goes through Lacombe now then he'll go and we'll wait for these guys to go back into the pits before it says qualifying over on the screen but um Yet again, it looks like the, two, the top two in the Drivers' Championship sharing the front row. Hasberg joining him alongside as a result. And uh, Power hoping to help his teammate out if he can as it looks like he's qualified in third place, I believe. So it looks like a 1-3 for Dacia Eldorado Jr. Uh, here this session. As heading down the hill goes Jack Aitken in the Willows Racing Car. As he goes down through Puan. Flicking the car in. We'll be seeing him going into the pits. And not a, the best of qualifying session. They've obviously said for Jack Aitken. Only managing ninth in that Willows car. And it appears that teammate Alexander Rossi has out qualified them to qualify in fourth place. So uh, Rossi finally um, looking like he's got Jack Aitken's number this weekend. Because the other weekends, Aitken's just had Rossi's pace uh, overall, it must be said. But uh, Aitken now they're just going around the right hander now, then, as he'll go up towards Blanchimon. And uh, we'll be seeing Aitken go straight on into the pit lane. It will then say qualifying over, I should say, unless uh, Kari is affecting those plans. Um, but I doubt it, but we'll wait and see. As uh, uh, Aitken now then goes into the pit lane, and there you have it, qualifying over. And as a result, it is Joseph Newgarden, I believe, who has taken pole position. Yes, it has. Joseph Newgarden has taken pole position for race two tomorrow and uh, completely dominated the session by over five tenths of a second. Nobody could actually touch him in the end. So there you have it then, guys. After all of that, here is the grid for race one tomorrow for IFMC GP3. It's Joseph Newgarden who takes pole position with Ferdinand Hasberg in second, Will Power in third, Alexander Rossi fourth, Nick Heifeld fifth, Daniel Kafiat in sixth, with Sebastian Boemi seventh, Robert Kibitza in eighth, Jack Aiken ninth, Marco Andretti in tenth, with Felipe Nazar eleventh, Mikel Alation twelfth, Nico Kari thirteenth, Jensen Button in fourteenth, and if we scroll down the rest of the field, it is Santina Ferrucci in 15th with Antoine Hubert in 16th, Lucas Degrassi in 17th with Anthony Davis in 18th and 
Eero Vainio in 19th, uh, Antonio Fawoko in 20th, Kyle Kayser in 21st, and Daniel Apt, uh, due to his qualifying ban, will start in 22nd and last. So there you have it then, guys. That is the qualifying session for IFMC GP3. And uh, obviously dominated by New Gun. Hopefully the race will be more exciting than what it has been in qualifying. But that is it for the on-track action from today. But stick around now, guys, because coming up next is the press comments for the top class. So if you've got any questions for any of the team bosses, leave them down there. And uh, But until then, I've been JWF1, and I'll see you guys in around 20 minute, in around just under 20 minutes' time for the press comments. Until then, take care, and see you in a little bit for the top class press conference.